Welcome back guys. In today's lecture we start talking about first expression type and we'll talk about numbers. In addition we'll talk about constant pool. Uh, as we mentioned in previous lectures, uh, usually we do not encode the actual numbers in the bytecode, instead uh, the indices from the constant pool. And also start talking about stack. Remember, uh, we built a stack machine, so uh, the values and the final results should be on top of the stack. And let's start from the new operation code, right, from the new opcode, and it will be the constant. Let's assign it the next number, number one, and this instruction uh, should push a constant onto the stack. Okay, so in the bytecode we will see the actual constant instruction, uh, which should be followed by the actual operand, that is the number. And as we said, we don't use the actual number, like say 42, uh, but instead the index from the constant pool, as we will see shortly. Now, since we introduced numbers, that will be the first value type we used in Eva Virtual Machine. So let's create the Eva value header file. Okay, so we're going to have values of different types. Let's introduce the enum class for the uh, types of values. And for now, we're going to handle only numbers. And now we should understand how we're going to represent the values in the virtual machine. Now, if we take the real machine, physical machines, um, or lower level languages like C++ or C, uh, the values are represented as is, right? As numbers, and there's a problem of differentiating a number, say, from a pointer at the lower level. They all just numbers. However, virtual machines usually represent values as typed values. So we're going to have a value as a tagged union. What this means, in addition to the value itself, we're going to store its type. Right, the value is represented as a structure, uh, the first field is the type, and then the actual data field um, corresponding to this type. So for now, as we said, we're going to have only numbers, and for number value, we're going to use underline double type in C++. Notice we use the union here, which means when we have uh, other value types, they will be shared in the same space without taking extra bytes. And let's introduce convenient constructor macro. For now, we're going to have only number constructor, right, passing the uh, double value from C++, it should construct uh, an eva value, that is the uh, type number, and the number field is set to the past value. Sounds good. So the size of the eva value uh, is anything inside this union plus its type. And now we can come back and encode this number, um, for example, using our constructor. However, as we said, we're not going to put numbers directly in the bytecode uh, and going to allocate it and push to the constants. Okay, and now let's go to the eval and handle the opcode for const. So after the reading the operation code, right, which will be the opconst in this case, uh, we need to read the const index, which is encoded right after um, operation code. Right, so, so this instruction has two bytes, the opcode itself plus the operand, which encodes the index. So we read the byte again, and that's exactly the constant index. And then to obtain the actual constant, we just read it from the constant pool by this index. As we said, by convention in a stack machine, we should push uh, the result of any instruction on top of the stack. Uh, that's exactly what we do, and we will introduce the push function for this. And the push operation is a standard stack operation. Uh, it should add a value on top of the stack. Now, first of all, to work with a stack, as we have seen in the previous lecture, we need a stack pointer. Right? So let's introduce the stack pointer here. Uh, standard name is SP. And for stack, we can use a standard stack data structure from C++ which already supports push and pop operations. However, in virtual machines, uh, we usually want to have stack uh, very fast, right? Instead of calling the push and pop method uh, in the underlying stack structure, uh, we're going to have pre-allocated stack. And that's exactly what usually happens uh, in virtual machines and real machines. So for the stack, we're going to use simple array, which should contain eva values, and it has a limit. Let's introduce this constant stack limit. And if we exceed the stack limit, we're going to have the famous stack overflow issue. Okay, so let's include the array header and have the stack limit, let's say, as uh, 512 values. All right, it's configurable. And now let's introduce the push operation. Okay, as we said, this function should push a value uh, on top of the stack. And the top of the stack, as we said, is pointed by the uh, stack pointer, that is SP. Uh, again, using the star operator, which gives us the value, so we can assign it, that is the push value. And then we have to increase the stack pointer to point to the next uh, free slot. So the next push will happen exactly there. Uh, sounds good. And since we mentioned stack overflow, let's do this check. So if the difference between the current stack pointer and the beginning of the stack uh, equals to the stack limit, that is, we occupied all the available slots, uh, we just die with the stack overflow. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And the reverse operation is popping the value from the stack. 
since the stack pointer points to the free slot, uh, to get the actual top of the stack, we need to decrease it first, right? So we decrease the stack pointer, and then we return the value uh, pointed by the decrease stack pointer. As the result, we'll have the actual value stored there, and the stack pointer is decreased. And also we do the check for the empty stack. Actually, here we have a slight bug. Uh, please, as you follow this implementation, this check should be not for the size zero, uh, but for the uh, stack begin, right? If stack pointer equals to stack begin, in this case, we throw empty stack. And since we have pre-allocated array, the size will never be zero here. So please address this bug. And since now our interpreter can return something, so let's change the type of the eval. It should return the eval value. Uh, the same for the exec. And actually, when we look at the operation const, which we've just uh, implemented, and we can introduce more abstracted macro, uh, let's say get const, and we'll be reading the byte and getting the constant. And one slight thing, inside the uh, number constructor, we should have group in parentheses, right, in order to use in expressions. Also inside the push function, let's accept the uh, reference instead of copying the value, just to avoid double copies. Uh, one slight bug, of course, stack pointer should be pointing not to the bytes as the instruction pointer did, but to the eva values, right? Remember, our stack contains eva values, but not the bytes. The pop function should not be void, but should be returning the actual eva value. And since eval returns the value, the uh, halt instruction should now return the final value which sits on top of the stack. Uh, so instead of just returning, we return the uh, actual pop. Okay, sounds good. So our main executable should now accept the result, uh, which should be eva value. And let's log the result. Uh, since this is a number, we just use the number field from the result. And that should be it. Let's try executing. And it works. Congratulations, we now have numbers. Now, uh, when we access the number field from the value, we actually expose implementation details. So let's introduce accessors uh, as macro. And the first accessor will be as number. Right? It's an inverse operation. Having the eva value, it should return the C++ implementation. So we just return the number field. Okay, so let's try using it, and it works. And we see the value 100, which we hard-coded in our bytecode. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, we have introduced the constant, we have introduced the constant pool, uh, the stack, uh, the stack pointer, and operation on the stack. And now our VM started to return actually the value. In the next lecture, we'll continue working with numbers, and we'll talk about mathematical operations, uh, so-called binary instructions. And later, we'll go to the objects. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks and see you in the class.